Shubhalas Pro with Anakshi Mataji and then of course, uh, you know, Anakshi Mataji's uh, both the daughters and kid. So with all of that, we also know, uh, I mean, she's a computer science graduate from UFT. She takes care of Iskon Tronos uh, initiatives. Uh, Iskon Tronos, uh, you know, St. Keaton's team in terms of the Shastra Dhani program and Iskon North America mentorship initiative and Prabhupada's foundation and friends of BBT. So we are very fortunate to have her. I love her candid way of explaining even the most complex things. So let's welcome her with huge Haribo! And today she will explain us every other thing of the connection of the sweet rice of our DTs, Sri Sri Baba Kichu Gopinath. You know what is this place called? Where are you right now? Some of, is it not sure? You call it New Raguna? Okay, where is Raguna, the original Raguna? She's going to give you an answer for all of that. We request Vidhi uh, Mataji to welcome Vinash Mataji here. And also, now I want a thunderous Haribo. When I tell you, we also want to celebrate that. It was her birthday last Thursday. So Haribo!
Today, we will be discussing some of the sweet pastimes of Sri Madhavendra Puri and his on Toronto's special connection to sweet rice or kheer. We actually observed Sri Madhavendra Puri's appearance day this past Thursday on May 23rd. Madhavendra Puri appeared on this earth in the year 1420, just a little over 600 years ago. And he was a great Vaishnava in the Brahma Madhava Golya Sampradaya, which is the parampara or disciplic succession from Lord Krishna himself. So from Lord Krishna to Balaram to Narada, so on and so forth to Madhavendra Puri, and then onwards further to Srila Prabhupada. So Madhavendra Puri is the spiritual master of another great personality named Sri Ishvara Puri. And Ishvara Puri is the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. So that makes Madhavendra Puri the great spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. Now, of course, Lord Chaitanya is Lord Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, one may ask, well, why does the Supreme Personality of Godhead require a spiritual master? Well, when Lord Chaitanya appeared, he appeared in the role of a devotee. And therefore, to set the perfect example he took on a spiritual master. Before Madhavendra Puri's appearance, there was no real practice of prema bhakti or love of Godhead. Madhavendra Puri was the first to exhibit these loving moods, loving separation feelings from Lord Krishna. Before that, people would perform regulative formal worship. And when those had strict rules and regulations, and therefore, there wasn't really a development of true loving feelings for the Lord, right? Some of you know that if you just do the instance like this, you're, you're not necessarily connecting with the Lord. And to achieve the perfection of the soul, to have the utmost connection with Krishna, we must develop those loving feelings with the Lord. We have to perform devotional service that pleases the Lord's senses. And when we do that, unlike when we develop relationships at the mundane level, which actually entangle us more and more in this material world, when we develop a relationship with Krishna, we actually release ourselves from the bondage of this material world, from the sufferings and miseries of this material world. And that gives us an opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. And it was this very transcendental mood that was introduced by Madhavendra Puri. It first sprouted in Madhavendra Puri, and then later, Lord Chaitanya imbibed those same feelings of devotional service and preached it through his devotees, associates, and disciples far and wide. And in this way, the tree of devotional service grew big and tall. And then, through the Parampara system, to Srila Prabhupada, because of Srila Prabhupada's purity and boldness, this devotional tree's branches have gone all over the world through the Hare Krishna movement. Madhavendra Puri showed us that we don't have to fear the Lord, we don't have to revere the Lord, but we can actually love the Lord. And that is the utmost feeling, the utmost connection that we can have with Krishna, right? If you have a child, who fears the mother, is that a good relationship? But if there's love for the mother, it's very reciprocal, right? It's a very intimate relationship. So we want to develop that kind of relationship with the Lord. And Madhavendra Puri exhibited spontaneous affection for Krishna. 
he would sing and share loudly the names and glories of Krishna without thinking of time or place. In ecstasy, he would forget if it was day or night. Sometimes he would laugh, sometimes he would cry, sometimes he would fall on the ground unconscious, and sometimes he would simply dance and dance. And Madhavinda Thori did not want to have anything to do with anything unrelated to Krishna. And because he didn't want to talk about anything other than Krishna, he lived alone, he traveled alone, he did not have a companion. And he would not ask for food, he would not beg for food. If he got it, fine, otherwise he would fast. So absorbed was he in love of Krishna. Now, Lord Krishna has everything. He doesn't need anything from anyone. But what captures him is unconditional love. We can't hand him money and cars and such. He doesn't need it. He has everything. But what he does get, just like the father gets pleased when they get love, similarly, the Supreme Father gets pleased when he gets his unconditional love. And in order to accept the affection of Madhavinda Puri and to reciprocate with him, Lord Krishna played some sweet pastimes with Madhavinda Puri. So once Madhavinda Puri was sitting under a tree in the forest of Vrindavan near Govardhan Hill, and he was absorbed in chanting and meditating. And he was hungry and thirsty, but he was chanting, he was absorbed. And suddenly, in front of him appeared a beautiful young cowboy boy. And this cowboy boy said to Madhavinda Puri, I have brought you a pot of milk. It is for you. Please drink it. When Madhavinda Puri saw this beautiful cowboy boy, he forgot all about his hunger, all about his thirst, and he was satisfied in his mind. And he asked the coward boy, where are you from? Where do you live? And how did you know that I was hungry? And the coward boy replied, he said, well, I live right here, near Govardhan Hill. And the village woman saw that you were chanting under the, under the tree and had not eaten anything. And no one in my jurisdiction goes hungry. So please drink this milk. Having said that, he then said, I've got to go milk the cows, and he quickly ran off. So Madhavinda Puri drank the sweet milk, got very satisfied, and now he had the empty pot. And he waited and waited in vain, thinking the coward boy will come back so he can return this empty pot. But the coward boy did not return. And so throughout the night, Madhavinda Puri was chanting and chanting, and he fell asleep. And then the coward boy did appear, but he appeared in Madhavinda Puri's dream. And he took Madhavinda Puri by the hand and led him to a dense forest overgrown with creepers and plants. And he said to Madhavinda Puri, I have lived here for a very, very, very long time. Now, sometime before that, the Mohammedan soldiers would come and attack the temples, try to destroy the deities. So the Brahmins, they would take the deities and try to hide them, to protect them. And in this case, this Gopal deity was also hidden and protected. So the Krishna, the coward boy, said to Madhavendra Puri that I am here, buried here, and I have been here for a very long time. I have been going through the heat of the summer, the cold of the winter, the rainy season, and I have been waiting for you. I have been observing you. I have been waiting for when Madhavinda Puri will come and serve me. And now that you are here, please take me from here, uncover me. Now Madhavinda Puri realized this was actually Krishna. And he explained in ecstasy, alas, alas, Krishna came to me face to face, but I could not recognize him.
Now we must remember that Krishna comes in his deity form. This is not an idol. Krishna enters deity forms made of material elements like wood, metal, stone, marble, etc. in order to have great mercy on us so that we can easily approach him. We can easily see him. We can easily serve him. The deity form, Archa Vigraha, is none other than Krishna himself with full potency, full opulence, full bliss. Just like when we utter the names of Krishna, we chant the names of the Lord, that is also not different from the Lord himself. So in the morning, Madhavinda Puri approached the villagers and asked for their help to extricate the Gopaditi. And they came, they cut through the overgrowth of the bush, they found the Diti, and then the strongest of the villagers lifted the Gopal Diti and took him to the top of the Govardhan hill. And there he was placed on a large flat slab of stone. And another slab was put behind the Gopal Diti for support. Now news traveled far and wide in the village about this incident. And the Brahmins started bringing sanctified water from Govinda Kund. And the villagers started bringing ghee, butter, yogurt, foodstuffs, fabrics, flowers, pulsi plants, and so much more. And then Madhavinda Puri arranged to do an abhishek that he personally did. And he dressed and decorated Gopal. And then he offered all the foodstuffs and all the fabrics and plants and such to the Lord. And he also had special preparations made for Gopal. And then he performed the first arti. And so in this way, there was an abundance of foodstuffs. And Gopal, who had not eaten for a very, very long time before Madhavinda Puri appeared, he ate every piece of food, all the foodstuffs that was offered, without leaving a morsel. That's how hungry he was. And Madhavinda Puri, because he had devotional eyes, transcendental eyes, he was able to witness this. But then the Lord, by his transcendental hand, replenished all the foodstuffs, therefore, therefore making it sanctified food or prashada. And that prashada was then distributed to all the villagers. Then Madhavinda Puri trained some of the Brahmins on how to do appropriate worship for Gopal, how to do offerings, how to do parties. And people would come from far and wide to have darshan of this Gopal Diti and bring whatever they could. And in this way, two years passed in wonderful service. But after those two years, one night, Madhavinder Puri came into the, sorry, Gopal came into the dreams of Madhavinda Puri. And he said to Madhavinda Puri, I am feeling very hot. My body is burning and I need to cool it down. And that the only way that I will cool down my body is by a special sandalwood paste from Malayan sandalwood. And that is only available in Nilachala Puri. And I want you, Madhavinda Puri, to go get it for me and go quickly. Now, the distance between Govardhan, where Gopal and Madhavinda Puri were, to Puri is about 1,700 kilometers. Now, Madhavinda Puri was an old man. He wasn't very young. He wasn't wealthy. He was a sannyasi who had no possessions, no companion, etc. But did Madhavinda Puri think, oh, I'm an old man, how will I walk? How will my knees hold up? I will get too tired. Maybe I can send someone else on my behalf. Not once did this come into his mind. Rather, Madhavinda Puri was so ecstatic to get this instruction from the Lord. He had an opportunity to serve the Lord even more. And he headed towards the east. Now this is a devotee's true devotion. 
A devotee does not have a conditional or transactional relationship with the Lord. He does not say that if I do this, O oh Lord, then you please do this for me. Right? It's absolutely unconditional. The devotee does not consider one's own convenience. The devotee will serve the Lord to satisfy the Lord, no matter the difficulty, the circumstances, what may befall the devotee, what the obstacles may be. And Madhavinda Puri perfectly emulated that true love for Krishna in the mood of the gopis. Once Narayani went to Krishna and he asked Krishna, who is your greatest devotee? And Krishna said, go to the various devotees of mine and tell them that I have a headache. And the only way I can be relieved of this headache is from the dust of the feet of my devotee. And so Narayani went to the various devotees and he said, Krishna has a headache and he needs the dust from my feet. And the devotees, some of them said, Krishna has a headache? He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How could that be? So they didn't believe him and they said, no, no, no. Narayani went to some other devotees and they said, he wants the dust from my feet? What will befall me? It's offensive. I don't want to do that. No, no, no. So in this way, all the devotees said no, because they were considering themselves. But then Narayani went to the gopis. And the gopis, when they heard this explanation, immediately they said, yes, take the dust from my feet. And Narayani said, but you will go to hell. You're not allowing the dust from your feet to go on Krishna's head. And they said, we may go to hell, but at least Krishna's headache will be cured. See, that is the mood of the gopis. That was Madhavinda Puri's mood, and that should be our mood. That no matter the difficulty, no matter the circumstances, no matter the consequences, we are here to serve the Lord. That is pure, loving, devotional service. So it was in this mood that Madhavinda Puri headed to Puri. And en route, he met with Advaita Acharya, who is a great personality who actually prayed day and night for the Lord to appear in Kali Yuga to relieve the souls that had forgotten Krishna, had forgotten their relationship with the Lord, forgotten their purpose in life. So after that ecstatic meeting, he went further and he stayed, stopped in Ramuna, which is about 250 kilometers from his destination in Puri. And there he went to the temple of Gopinath and had darshan of the Gopinath Diti. And he was very impressed with how the Pujaris were serving the Diti. And he asked the Pujaris, what foodstuffs do you offer to Gopinath? Because he was thinking that I can emulate that for my Gopal Diti in Govardha. And they explained to him that they offer a special condensed milk in 12 pots called Amrita Keli. And they offer this every evening to Gopina. Now Madhavinda Puri thought, well, if I could just taste this, then I will know how to prepare it properly and I can offer it to Gopal in Govardhan. But as soon as he thought this, he felt ashamed. He said, how could I think of that when this sweet rice has not even been offered to the Lord. And he felt offensive. And so, feeling that way, he silently, without anybody noticing, left the Gopinath temple. And he went to the marketplace and found an empty stall under the tree and started chanting and fell asleep. In the meantime, Gopinath had his 12 pots of sweet rice and the Pujaris then put Gopinath to rest and they went to sleep as well. But then Gopinath came to the dream of one of the Pujaris and he said to the Pujari, wake up, open the temple doors, come to the altar, 
I have hidden one pot, which you didn't notice, one pot of sweet rice under my dhoti. And he explained exactly where it was. And he said, take this pot to my devotee, Madhavinda Puri, who is in the village marketplace in a stall under a tree. So the Pajari woke up quickly, bathed, opened the temple doors, went to the altar, and found this pot exactly where Gopinath described. And he was astonished. He took that pot and went out the temple doors, went to the marketplace and called, Madhavinda Puri, oh Madhavinda Puri, where are you? Gopinath has stolen a pot of sweet rice for you. You are so fortunate, come out and get it. And Madhavinda Puri came out and heard this story and himself became ecstatic and fell down in a trance. He then took the pot from the Pujari and relished every last drop of this pot of sweet rice. And after relishing it, he thought, everyone is going to hear about this in the morning. There's going to be huge crowds when they hear about this incident. And Madhavinda Puri was so humble, he didn't want to focus on himself. He only wanted to serve the Lord. So he paid his obeisances right on the spot to the Gopinath Diji and left the place before dawn. And so from that moment on, Gopinath became known as Kirchor Gopinath, the Gopinath Diti that stole sweet rice. So now there's an interesting story about how Gopinath actually appeared in Ramuna. Does everybody want to hear that? Okay. So the deity of Gopinath was actually carved by Lord Ramachandra himself in Tretagin. So once Lord Ram and Sita Devi were traveling through the forests and they stayed in a place called Chitrakut. And it was very rainy at that time. There was a deluge of rain. So they stayed in an ashram for shelter. And Lord Ram was gazing out to the meadows and he saw many, many cows that were grazing and moving. And he turned to Sita Devi and remarked, this reminds me of my future pastime in Dwarpayu, where I will be in Vrindavan, protecting the cows and playing with the cowherd boys. And when Sita Devi heard this, she said, please describe those pastimes to me. And Lord Ram said, I won't describe them to you, but I'll carve them on a black rock so you can see them for yourself. And you wait one week and I will show them to you. So Sita Devi was waiting and waiting. And you know, we all seem to get impatient, right? You know the Jagannath story. But after four days, Sita said, I can't wait any longer, O oh Lord. Please show me. So Lord Ram took her to the black rock and showed a beautiful Gopal Krishna deity that had been carved by his own arrow. And accompanying that deity were eight principal gopis, four maid servants, several cows, and many pastimes of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. And Sita was astonished to see the beauty of this deity. And she began offering and praying, praying to this deity and taking care of the deity. However, of course, they never stayed there for so long. They were always traveling. So after a few days when Lord Ram and Sita left, Lord Brahma took it upon himself to do the deity worship. And he worshipped this Gopal Krishna deity throughout Trinayu, throughout Dwarvayu, and the first few centuries of Kaliyu for that long. And then in Kaliyu in the 13th century, the king of Orissa, who was very pious, decided to go on pilgrimage to all the holy places. And he himself ended up in Chitrakot. And he saw this beautiful deity that was seemingly abandoned. And he thought, oh, nobody is worshipping this deity. He didn't know Lord Brahma was. And so he thought, what should I do? The Lord appeared in his dreams that very night and said, I no longer wish to stay here. I want to go to a more populated place. So the king thought, I will take this deity to Puri. And when the queen saw this deity, she said his name should be Gopina, the master of the gopis, because of the gopis that were surrounding 
the deity. And so they went on their way with the entourage, and of course they ended up in Ramuna. And when they ended up there, the king decided to take some rest. And the Lord appeared again in his dream and said, Don't take me to Puri. I wish to remain here in Ramuna. Please install me here. Now, Ramuna is a special place for Lord Ram as well. See all these interconnections. When Ram and Sita were actually returning from Lanka, Sita wanted to take a bath in the Ganges. And they were in Ramuna, very far from the Ganges. So Lord Ra took seven arrows and shot them into the earth and brought forth the Ganges so that Susita Devi could have a bath. So this Gopina Titi in Ramuna is actually millions and millions of years old, carved by Lord Ram himself. So coming back to Madhavinda Puri's trek to get this sandalwood, he left Ramuna and he headed towards Puri. And there he ended up at the Jagannath temple. And of course, he had a wonderful darshan, ecstatic chanting and dancing in front of Lord Jagannath. But then he explained to the Pajaris and the people why he had come all the way from Govardhan. And they were very happy to hear this as well. And they thought, yes, we will help you acquire this special Malayan sandalwood. And they helped Madhavinder Puri acquire 82 pounds of sandalwood. And then Madhavinda Puri started his trek back. Now it was an arduous journey because he had valuable sandalwood. And the soldiers would attack, the thugs, the order, lots of things that were happening. But Madhavinda Puri did not worry about any of that because he was focused on serving the Lord, serving Gopal. So he headed back and again stopped in Ramuna, again had darshan of Kirchor Gopinath, and the Pajaris of course remembered him and gave him Kir Prashada. And Madhavinda Puri decided to rest for the night because he had at least 1,500 kilometers more to go. And so when he rested in the night, Gopal appeared in his dreams and he said, Oh Madhavinda Puri, there is no difference between my body and Gopinath's body. And so, if you smear sandalwood paste on Gopinath's body, it will be the same as smearing on my body. And my body will also be cooled in that way. So please do so. Believe me, do not hesitate. So Madhavinder Puri, of course, did not ask questions of the Lord. He would listen to whatever the Lord said. And so in the morning, he explained what happened to the Pajaris of the Kirchur Gopinath Deity. And they, of course, are very pleased to get this sandalwood. So they arranged for the sandalwood to be ground up into paste. And it was applied on the Gopinath Deity. And Madhavinda Puri stayed for many days there until all the sandalwood paste was used. Now, Lord Chaitanya actually narrated the story that I'm telling you about Madhavinda Puri. He himself described these pastimes to his disciples, devotees, and associates. And why did he do so? He wanted to show the devotees to all of us how we should perform devotional service for the Lord. Madhavinda Puri is the first authority on unconditional transcendental service. It is said that Madhavinda Puri is the utmost and ideal example for anyone who wants to awaken their natural desire to serve the Lord with love and devotion. And at the end of Madhavinda Puri's life, he was still so deeply absorbed in love of Krishna that he would always remember him even till the end. And in deep ecstasy, he would repeatedly utter the famous verses of Srimati Radharani, saying, O oh Lord, O oh most merciful Master, when shall I see you again? So one may ask, what does the great Madhavinder Puri and the pastimes of Kirchur Gopina and Ramuna relate to Iskand Toronto? Why 
are we celebrating the Sweet Rice Festival? The Sweet Rice Festival is actually unique to Iskand Charanja. No other temple in the world celebrates the Sweet Rice Festival. So you should feel special. And there's a very special reason for that. Our deities are actually named Sri Sri Radha Kircho Gopina. And our temple is named New Ramuna Dam after the original Kircho Gopina in Ramuna, Orissa, India. Back in the 1970s, devotees under the guidance of Srila Prabhupada were acquiring deities for their newly established temples. And the devotees in this one, Toronto, wanted to acquire deities as well. So they wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada expressing this desire. As Srila Prabhupada wrote back and said, there are actually a couple of devotees in Jaipur right now acquiring deities for the Dallas Temple and the Detroit Temple. So write to them to actually acquire deities for Toronto as well. So the, DT, the devotees did that, and the two more deities were arranged. And the devotees in Jaipur shipped seven crates to North America. Six crates of Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna for the three temples, and one crate of paraphernalia. And these were sent in the very early summer of 1972. The devotees were waiting and waiting and waiting. Three months passed, no deities, where were they? So they contacted those devotees and said, well, we shipped them. We labeled them as Storm New York. But there was no specific address written there. That's kind of a big bit of a wonder. And we didn't have Google or internet or anything like that at that time. So the airline brought them. They didn't know what to do. So they put them in the cargo facility in the storage because they didn't want to send such big crates back. So they kept them there, three months passed, and the devotees put on their investigative hats and found these crates and went to New York. So the devotees from Toronto actually went to New York and bought these, DTs, uh, these crates out of storage and drove to Buffalo, to the border. And the devotees from Dallas and from Detroit met with the Toronto devotees there because we didn't want to bring the crates across the border and deal with all the customs. And so they met there and each temple, you know, took their Radha and their Krishna and some of the paraphernalia. And by the Lord's mysterious arrangement, the Radha that was supposed to go to Dallas actually ended up here. So our Radha Rani is actually supposed to be Dallas' Radha Rani, but no more. <laughs> so then when these DTs finally got to Toronto and we finally opened the crates, Krishna was taken out and the devotees noticed that there was a little bit of a belly. Krishna had a little tummy. And they were like, hmm, why is that? So they decided to call Srila Prabhupada because, oh my gosh, Krishna has a tummy. So, so they called Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada listened and then he simply laughed. And he said that your deity is actually Gopinath. And he eats 12 pots of rice every evening, sweet rice every evening, and therefore he has a little bit of a tummy. So your deity shall be named Sri Sri Radha Kirja Gopinath, and your temple shall be named New Ramuna Dham, and you should offer 12 pots of sweet rice to the Lord every evening. And so, Radha Kircha Gopinath were installed on Radha Asti in September of 1972. And since that moment, 12 pots of sweet rice have been offered every single evening in the last offering at 7.30 p.m. That has been happening for 52 years non-stop. That's over 227,000 pots of sweet rice. So we should, from the core of our hearts, with no ulterior motive, with no conditions, become devoted to Krishna. Serve Him with every being that you can, every part of your heart, mind, body, 
body and soul in a loving and devotional mood, emulating the way Sri Madhavinda Puri has led by example. And in this way, you will get out of this temporary world of misery and strife and go back home, back to Godhead. Please take advantage of this Sankirtan movement that Lord Chaitanya has inaugurated, that Srila Prabhupada, by his limitless mercy, has brought to all of us. And in doing so, make your life sublime. Shri Shri Radha Kircha Gopinath Ki, Shri Radha Puri Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. We actually have a bunch of sweet rice pots, so if you want to take advantage of getting Maha sweet rice today, that have been hand-painted pots just for the Lord on a special day, please take advantage and you can get them today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mother Vinakshi. Can you give a big round of applause for speaking on the Thank you. 